Hello, my name is Monica Bednarek and I work at the Department of Linguistics at the University of Sydney. This screencast belongs to a series called Key Concepts in Corpus Linguistics. And the topic for this screencast is Text versus Corpus. Before we start talking about text versus corpus, it's important to point out that corpora do not have all the answers. For example, corpus linguistics tends to focus on what is typical and repeated rather than what is possible or not possible, since arguably even the largest imaginable corpus is not exhaustive. Further, corpus itself doesn't give us any explanations, but it, what it does give us is findings which corpus linguists can interpret and try to explain. Thirdly, the usefulness of corpus linguistics depends on the research question, including the availability of data. For instance, if you're interested in endangered languages, you may not be able to compile a corpus because only limited data are available. Finally, the extent to which you will be able to generalize from your corpus to a language variety depends on the corpus design and you might be able to come up with further limitations. But in a way, any approach has its limitations and it's important to show awareness of what these limitations might be. One debate around corpus linguistics centers on the difference between a text and a corpus, each offering the advantages and disadvantages. Analyzing one or several texts allows you to undertake complete and detailed descriptions of a language. The advantage is that you can take into account fine distinctions, you can offer a rich and precise description, and you are able to closely engage with the text. The disadvantage is the low representativeness of small data sets. In contrast, analyzing large corpora allows you to focus on patterns and statistical frequency, and has the advantage that corpus may offer high representativeness if it is well designed and large, and the results are statistically reliable and generalizable. Some people have even argued that it reduces researcher bias because in theory results should be replicable. The disadvantage is that the analysis might be too descriptive and too general and perhaps less complex and may fail to take into account the context or only do so to a certain extent. For example, if you, if you have a large corpus that contains 100,000 texts, it's virtually impossible to know each text in depth. To continue with this debate about text versus corpus, Tonini Bonelli, 2010, proposes that the difference between approaching a text and approaching a corpus is that a text is typically read whole, read horizontally, read for content, read as a unique event, read as individual act of will, and as coherent communicative event. In contrast, a corpus is typically read fragmented, read vertically, read for formal patterning, read for repeated events, read as a sample of social practice, and not read as a coherent communicative event. Um, I'm just going to illustrate um, with these two examples. So both are looking at the same kind of text, the blurb that is on the back of DVD box sets advertising a TV series. So the picture um, at the top relates to a study I've done on a corpus of 50 blurbs and looks at how one of the most frequent words in the corpus is used, uh, the word season. Um, so concordances, one of the key techniques in corpus approach, allow you to read vertically. And I could then say something about blurbs and the way the, the word season is used in them as a language variety. In contrast, you can also analyze the text as a coherent communicative event looking at its content. For example, um, if you look at the bottom of the uh, screen, you could look at how the blurb for the TV show The Wire starts here by evaluating and introducing the series in relation to its audience before it goes on to describing the storylines. But you wouldn't want to make the claim based on this unique text that this is what happens in all DVD blurbs. So it is worth being aware of these differences and issues and perhaps triangulate data and methods or to think about novel ways to do corpus linguistics that minimizes the limitations of this approach. One solution could be to work with smaller corpora or to combine analysis of large corpora with analysis of texts. And if you're interested in some of my own work uh, where I try to com combine corpus linguistics and discourse analysis, um, you can have a look at, at these two publications here, 2009 and 2010, if you're interested. Um, thank you for listening.